Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We're going to get started here in just a second. Amen. We wanted to do something a little bit different. I know the time is starting to change. Amen. So, um, and I know Pastor has something set up where he's going to start. Amen. Um, teaching out, of, teaching out of the church. Amen. So, since the um, the sunlight is lasting longer. Amen. Amen. So it's a blessing for that. Amen. Do me a favor as you are coming in. Amen. Uh, go ahead and share this on your on your pages. They can click that little link that shares that says share, 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 share. Amen. Let's get it out to everybody. Let everybody know we are in the building. Amen. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in the word of prayer on tonight. Father God, we come before you right now. Humbly as we know how, oh God, we just give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, oh God. God, we thank you for who you are in our lives on today, oh God. God, we ask that you clean out our minds, oh God. Everything that we have went through today, oh God, Clear it all out, O oh Father, that you may be able to have your holy and divine way on today, O oh God. God, the word that comes forth, O oh God, let it be meat, hallelujah, to our souls, O oh God. Let it be food, hallelujah, for our souls, hallelujah. Let it quench every thirst, hallelujah, that we have, O oh God, in you. God, we love you. We praise you. We glorify you, God. Those that are that are troubled in their bodies right now, we ask that you touch them right now, O oh God. Those that are troubled in their minds right now, oh God. We ask that you touch them even right now, oh God. Those that are traveling, oh God, hallelujah. We ask that you bless them right now, oh God. Those that are going through anything right now, oh God, hallelujah, anxiety, God, depression, Father. We ask that a word comes forth for you, oh God, to teach us how to live in you or how to glean from you, oh God, and how to get strength from you in our time of need and encouragement from you in our time of need and comfort from you in our time of need, oh God. God, we love you, we praise you, and we glorify you. And we'll be careful on tonight to give your name all the praise, all the glory, all the honor in Jesus' matchless name. We pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. 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 So I want to um, kind of recap what we went through last week. Amen. If you joined us on last week, we... We went through an honest question, amen. So I want to give a, a, a quick recap of everything that we went through. Um, the scriptures, the key scriptures that we used was Acts 2.37 and Acts 16.30, amen. And uh, 2.37 says, men and brethren everywhere, what shall we do? An honest question, amen. And Acts 16.30 says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Amen. We begin to walk through every human being as is a, a sinner and stands in the need of salvation. Amen. How many people have realized the fact, amen, and asked the question, what must I do to be saved? Um, Kennedy has given us a blueprint. Amen. It has given you real life instructions. 
amen, to live this life and what you need to do to get yourself prepared, amen. There's some prerequisites that you must do to get yourself prepared, amen, to go to heaven when Jesus comes back. Is that all right? Amen. Turn down my microphone just a little bit. I got Sister Sarah and Brother Corey staring me in my face up in the sanctuary right now. Amen. <laughs> so what we did is, is, is we, we walked through amen, uh, the fallen nature of humanity. That's sort of what we um, walked through. Um, I want to uh, dive into the scriptures and us we do to be saved. Amen. And we tried to discuss the issue that arise out of the subject, amen, and we, we, we want to, again on tonight, lay aside, amen, the doctrines of man and man-made denominations, amen, and see what the Bible teaches us, amen, about what must I do, amen, amen. So I, I, um, I want to jump down to part two of this. I don't want to spend too much time recapping Amen. Everything we did. So we painted a picture of God's creation and humanity before Christ. Amen. Which is our fallen nature and our sinful nature and why the question is asked, the honest question, what shall we do? How can I be saved and how can I get salvation? Amen. This is not a, a one time thing. A one time past decision doesn't save you for future. Amen. Tense. Amen. Um, so I want to, uh, our salvation will only be complete um, when we receive glorified immortal bodies, that of the resurrected body of Jesus. Amen. So we we, we dealt with uh, the, the three tenses of sal salvation and how they are closely related. Amen. So I want to now um, do part two. So part two of it lays the, the rest of the foundation um, down. Where does the Bible uh, in Matthew Mac 10, 22, he that endureth to the end, this is the scripture that we ended off on, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Or whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This last verse, believeth, is implying that continue and believe is nothing. Continued present belief is necessary. Amen. So let me go ahead and I see Sister Michelle out there. Amen. Sister Janetta out there. That's who praying hands is. Sister Aisha is out there. Uh, Latoya missed you this Sunday. Amen. Uh, Brother Marcus. Uh, Constance is out there. Sister Freddie is out there. Amen. Potato Face is out there. <laughs> Linda Montgomery and the clan is out there. Brother Corey is out there. Sister Ann is out there. Uh, Sister Ronnie is out there. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Gloria, Mother Gloria is out there. Brother Henry is out there. Amen. Thanks for joining us on tonight. Amen. So I want to dive into uh, the rest of our, our text that, that we're going to go through. Amen. Uh, now, Paul also said uh, the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Amen. So when you see ETH in the King James version or a, a version of your Bible, it, that is something that is continuous. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, what? The just shall live by faith. Salvation will come to those who move from faith to faith. So you don't stay in one place. Amen. You move from faith to faith as you mature in the faith, as you, as you pass tests that are presented before you, amen, you move from faith to faith to those who will continue to live by faith. Paul said, work out your own salvation, amen, with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible also says, you know, people may get upset with you when you say this, especially when you say it to family members or to your children, amen, uh, uh, um, save yourself, Save yourself from this untoward generation. This does not mean we can save ourselves, though, by our own plan or, or earn our salvation by any means. It we honestly abide in people. We should cherish salvation 
awe and with respect, amen, realizing that we can lose it if we don't value it. Anything that you don't value, amen, you don't even treat it right anymore. I wonder how many saints are in the uh, listening in, even in on tonight, amen, where you had a lot of fire and you was on fire for Jesus, amen. You were, you, you were, you, you felt good when you were filled with the Holy Man, you want to talk about amen, but as you in the world with God, amen, your walk comes This will be allowed to happen because our actions will show whether we now use salvation, how much time are you spending with God? Don't add amen. Don't, don't, don't put it in the comments. But these are some rhetorical questions that you should ask yourself. Amen. If you say you value your salvation, how much time are you spending with God? Let that sit there for a second. Amen. I'm going to jump over to the Bible it says in 1 Timothy 4, 16, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Amen. The apostles doctrine, the, the 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 instructions that Jesus left behind the disciples in order for us to follow. Amen. Continuing them it says, for in doing so this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. You hear that first Corinthians 15 one says, more old brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you which also you receive, which you stand, by which also you are saved, and if you hold fast, glory, that word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain, you hear that? Unless you believed in vain, you got to hold on to it. You got to hold on to it, to, to something precious, amen, like, what, like our devices right now, our cell phones right now, we hold close to those things, amen, and we get to, hey, we get to moving around and looking if we if our device is not in our hand. This is how we have. This is the value. This is the attention that we have to pay to salvation. Amen. Um, Romans eleven twenty two says, therefore, consider the goodness mm, and severity of God on those who fail severity. But towards you, goodness, if you continue in his goodness, otherwise, this is this is. This is the harsh reality. You also will be cut off. So, 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 so for those that are, that, that are passing through and that are listening, how do you have eternal security if the Bible clearly says, if you continue, if, there go that if clause, if you continue in this goodness, otherwise you will also be cut off. My God, hallelujah. These are some things that 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 makes us get our mind right, get our life right, get your house in order. The Bible tells us get your house in order. Amen. Do you have your house in order on today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I see somebody saying that the video is breaking up. Amen. So hopefully uh, uh, the the Internet over here in Phoenix. Uh, fixes itself, but I was doing that uh, when we were preaching this past Sunday too, amen, so um, I don't know if something is happening over here, but amen, these are just a few passages that exposes the risk of losing your salvation through unbelief and through disobedience. You can lose your salvation through unbelief and through disobedience. Is this helping somebody? I, I, I see me myself. I love foundational teaching. Amen. You you have to preach Jesus. We are commissioned to preach the gospel, to spread the gospel. The gospel is the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So these are foundational principles that we all should know. Sometimes people sit under apostolic teaching, under apostolic faith for 10, 15, 20 years, and you don't even know the doctrine yourself. Amen. This is something that you need to learn. This is something that you need to know to give a reason as the hope that lies within you. You got to tell, well, why are you saved? What, what, it showed to me in the Bible where salvation happened for you at. 
can you walk them through the scriptures and show them, see this right here, this, this, this right here, this is what happened to me. You see chapter 10, how the house of Cornelius, amen, Peter began preaching to them. And as he was preaching to them, they got filled with the Holy Ghost. And then they got, is that your, is that your testimony? You was filled with the Holy Ghost first and then you got baptized or was you feel baptized and then filled with the Holy Ghost? These are some things that you need to know. Amen. Know that know what you believe, because if you don't know what you believe, the Bible says you'll have itchy ears and you'll fall, fall predator to 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 false doctrines. Your people will come and tell you anything that that, that sounds like the truth and you'll believe it. People and pe by people, I mean preachers, pastors, people with titles will come and say something over the pulpit. Amen. And you'll take it at face value. We have to continue to walk in the gospel. Amen. In short, we have not received all the eternal benefits of salvation and therefore our future salvation is still a hope. This is still something we got to hold on to. The Bible says we are saved by hope. And we have the hope of salvation. That's eight Romans eight twenty four. Amen. Do you know your Bible? There one one to abstain to obtain eternal salvation is to find present salvation. Amen. From the sin in this life, that's only through Jesus Christ. If we realize the condition of our fallen nature, the condition of our humanity, this brings us to the honest question: What must I do? How can we be saved from sin in this life? If somebody come to you and they come to you downtrodden, amen, their continence is down and, and, and they begin to unload their issues and unload their relationship problems and their financial problems on you. Can you walk them? Let's, let's look at the scriptures. Do you have a testimony to tell them on today on what happened to you on your transfiguration? Amen. When you were transformed. Amen. Let's look at I want us to look at three scriptures relating to the question. Amen. The first comes from the ministry of Christ, because it's only three times it happens in the Bible where somebody actually asked a question and it was answered in a very simple way. What shall we do and what must I do to be saved? So the three are the um, first comes from the ministry of Christ. The other um, three are the only two places. All the other two are the only two places in the New Testament where someone asks how to be saved. Amen. So you can go in your Bible. You know what? It says that in the Bible. How what must I do to be saved? Where is that at? Where is that located at? You know, I know where it's at. So hopefully you got your you got your 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 tool belt out and you write little notes to put in your tool belt when it's time for you to witness. Amen. John chapter three. Verse three records an important conversation, amen, between Nicodemus and Jesus. Nicodemus came to Jesus at night and acknowledged him as a teacher from God. Amen. Jesus replied, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. He cannot, you can't even see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus was confused. Amen. Asking, how can this be? Do I got to go back inside my mother's womb? Do I have to be born a, a second time from my mother's womb? Jesus explained, except a man be born of water. Amen. And of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You have to be born of both. It's one. It's one. Amen. Uh, salvation with two components baptized in the water and then you need to be baptized in the spirit so if you only been baptized in the water you still have a prerequisite to fulfill in order for you to enter into the kingdom of God I hope somebody paying attention tonight Jesus was introducing and pointing towards amen in the New Testament he was introducing the new dispensation of grace he was introducing the new way for you to be saved. He was pointing towards a new age in which the kingdom of God will soon be revealed. And every person, man, woman, child, is not to a specific 44,000, 144,000, those that only have special gifts. Every man, woman, and child, amen, to enter the kingdom would have to be born again. And to be born again, you have to be of both water and of spirit. It's two components. The kingdom of God is, is a whole teaching, 
And it's like salvation has present and future aspects. Present and future aspects. Amen? Applying Christ's word in John 3 to the concept of the kingdom of God, we find you may have to be born again, amen, in order to partake of either its temporary present manifestation, amen, of its eternal manifestation. No one can have the, the, the spiritual rule of God in his life, amen, until you are born again of water and spirit. You can, you, you can say, you can put plans together, amen, and say, I'm no longer going to do this. I'm, I'm, I'm no longer going to, going to drink anymore. I'm no longer going to cuss anymore. I am, I, I, you, you know, you, you set your moral compass at a certain thing, but is, there's a certain thing about humanity. Everybody has something that will make you do something, amen, outside of your own moral character, outside of your own upbringing, amen. You're not, you're not as strong as you think you is. And if you're being honest with yourself on today, amen, there are some things right now that you know you can't conquer unless you have God living on the inside of you. You need the present aspect of God living on the inside of you in order for you to even be able to overcome. You need the rule, the spiritual rule of God, which is the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you. Amen. Some of us, amen, have been filled with the Holy Ghost and we need a refreshing. Amen. You have been living like a heathen right in the church. Talking like a heathen, you know, uh, acting as those that are out in the world. Amen. Amen. And, and, and then you got the nerve to say you're a Christian. Hello, somebody. It's tight, but it's right. Amen. The honest question is, how can I be saved the right way? How can I live the right way? How can I enter the kingdom of God? The answer Jesus himself gave was, you must be born again of water and spirit. Amen. And I, I keep saying water and spirit because people think the moment you get baptized, you got the spirit immediately. Well, I have the fruits of the spirit. Amen. And that's a whole nother teaching. I just want to focus on, I don't want to focus on man-made religions. I want to focus on what the Bible says. What does the Bible teach us about what must I do to be saved? In Acts 1, Jesus gave the disciples specific instructions just before his ascension into heaven. He stayed down with them, for those that don't know, for about 40 days, lacing them, sitting them down, they, telling them what the narrative of the New Testament church should look like, how it should flow, amen, how it should be set up. That's what apostolic is, apostles' doctrine, the apostles' doctrine, the apostles' teaching. Doctrine is just teachings. He told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. Does anybody know where that's at? Anybody know where that's, that's located at? Where did he tell them, tarry in Jerusalem and wait to be endued from power on high? Where was that at? Let me give you two seconds to put it in there. Amen. See if somebody know their Bible. Amen. Wait to be endued from power on high. Do you know when they went, when they all left, this, this is a good story about just, just endurance, amen, and, and hanging in there and fighting the good fight of faith because thousands of people started with them when they started their march to Jerusalem to wait to be endued from power on high. But how many got filled in the upper room? Not thousands, amen. He told them to go to Jerusalem, amen. I see, don't, don't nobody know, amen, so I'm... <laughs> It's in the book of Luke. It was one of the last gospels. At the end of the chapter, he tells them to go wait to be endued and wait till you be endued from power on high. He told the disciples that they had to go get endued because he would no longer be with them. Amen. So we, we start dropping it in there. I see uh, Potato Face put it in there first. Amen. There's a little delay. And there's just a shiner popped it in next. Exactly. Y'all better put that in your, that should be in your tool belt. Luke 24, 49. When he told them to wait, he told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father, namely the Holy Ghost. And remember I said a thousand started that walk, that journey? 
120 obeyed him and obeyed. They believe they kept believing and their, their belief and their lifestyle matched their belief. And they gathered in the famous upper room. Amen. Acts 2 re records that on the Jewish feast day of Pentecost, amen, Pente just means 50, the promised spirit baptism came and it happened. The first outpouring, people gathered around the disciples because they were attracted, amen, by the supernatural sound that accompanied the first outpouring of the spirit as well as by foreign languages. Everybody was speaking with new languages as the spirit gave utterance. This is when Peter, who was given the keys to the kingdom, seized the opportunity to preach the word of God. He began to preach the first sermon after the spirit had just failed. He preached what? Jesus. He proclaimed that Jesus of Nazareth, whom they had just crucified, was both Lord and Christ both Lord and Messiah. Amen. I don't know about you all, but I, I get excited about foundational teachings, amen, because I know what it did for me. Here's the second scripture we talked about when, when they asked the honest question. Now, after they had heard, they had heard Peter preach, they began to be convicted. They were convicted of sin and guilt. And what they did came rushing back to their memory. You know how you repent and you're sitting in the house of God. Amen. The word of God is going forth and the guilt of sin becomes more heavy than it has ever became in your life. This was what was happening to them. And this. Just like that, they said, they asked Peter and the rest of the disciples standing around, man and brethren, what shall we do? According to the context, they were asking, how can we receive forgiveness for our sins that they're thinking about? How can we correct our wrongs we have done in rejecting Jesus and crucifying him? What do we what do we have to do? The guilt was on them heavy as bricks. How can we now accept Jesus as Lord and Messiah? Woo. So in our search, amen, and when people come and talk to us, what must we do to be saved? Peter was clear. He was concise. It wasn't, it wasn't theology. It, he, he didn't tell them none of that. He was very clear. It was simplistic. A child can understand it. It was direct. It didn't have any gray area. Amen. As today, when you walk in, you walk into, you just walk down the Broadway right now, you're walking every church that you go in, salvation will look different. So why do we dispute it even today if it was that clear in the book of Acts when Peter preached the first sermon? Or why do we walk in certain places and the gospel is not even preached according to the narrative history of the New Testament church? The commentary, this is this is a summary of, of Christian doctrine. This is what it is. What must I do to be saved? We ask this question in one other place in the Bible. What must I do to be saved? Acts 16 records that the magistrates of, of Philippi, a city of Macedonia, jailed Paul and Silas for preaching the gospel. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. Suddenly, an earthquake shook the prison and opened the doors. When the jailer woke, y'all know this story. When the jailer woke and, and realized what had happened, he assumed they escaped. And apparently the penalty is death. Amen. If you're the jailer, amen, and people escape, then you're about to get killed. So he faced for a lot. This is what he faced for allowing it to happen in the first place. So he decided to commit suicide. Did y'all know that? He was about to commit suicide. Right as he drew his sword, amen, glory to God. I, I can see somebody right now, amen, right when you was about to die in your sin, right when it was just about over, right when you was about to make the decision that in your life, right when he drew the sword to try to kill himself, Paul shouted, do thyself no harm, for we are here. Oh, my God. When he heard this, the jailer grabbed a light and went to see for himself. 
Amen. When we're witnessing the people and you see people pouring out their lives and what they're going through, wait, 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 wait. don't give up yet. Amen. Open the Bible and show them the same light that you've seen. He came trembling and fell down at the feet of Paul and Silas, realizing that they were the ones responsible for the earthquake. He brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Glory. Hallelujah. They believed. They replied, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be, the, be saved and thy house. They spoke a word to him and his family and the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized. He and all his straight way. Listen. He, he like, come to my house. Don't just, don't just save me. From what I just saw happen, amen. From what I'm looking at the way you're, I, I remember where you used to be. Take me to wherever, hallelujah, you got your experience. That's where I want to go. After they acted on asking the question, um, asking the question was receiving it. That's the gospel of urgency that we preach today. You can't wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promise. Tomorrow is not promised. You think you got a whole nother week to part. Well, I guess I'll get my life together next week or maybe tomorrow. When you voice those words out of your mouth, the enemy is reacting all around you. In this passage, Paul and Silas told the jailer that the path to his future salvation was through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, presumably, the jailer was a Gentile and did not know anything about God. Amen. Because you know the, the gospel of Jesus Christ came to the Jews first, and then we were considered. Amen. The Jews understood terms and words like repentance and baptism and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Furthermore, there was a crisis happening right at that moment. Amen. No time for a preach sermon. Amen. No time for a detailed explanation. They didn't have time for any of that. This is this is what I'm saying. When we are witnessing, when we are evangelizing, you don't got time to give them a whole test. You don't got time to preach a whole sermon. They didn't have time right at that moment. This man was about to kill himself. Amen. The jailer was about to kill himself. Stop. Is what they yelled at him. It was a crisis right at that moment. Amen. He said, well, what must I do in order to be saved? He needed to be shown immediately which direction to head in. What direction do I need to walk in? Amen. I'll never forget. And this is only my testimony, not no knock against anyone else. I'll never forget a person asking me, repeat these words after me. Hallelujah. And then told me I was saved. I didn't feel anything. This is just my, my testimony. But when I experienced that new birth, when I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And I told God, God, if I'm missing anything, just give it to me. I didn't, I, I, I didn't say, let's go Terry for the whole, none of that happened. I said, God, if I'm missing anything, just do it. All I remember is, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And 45 minutes later, the whole church was shut. Every, the saints had went home on a Bible study night. Hallelujah. And it was just me standing there. Amen. And I just know there was a light. Everything looked brighter. The right way. I was shown the right way. But you got to study to show you. You got to know that you know that you know that you know these foundational principles of the word of God. Paul and Silas told him in the most simple way possible how he could receive future salvation. Namely, by believing on Jesus Christ instead of on, on, on the things that we believe in, pagan gods. Amen. Idols. Idols seem like a bad word, but amen. If I'm, if I'm watching TV more than I'm reading my Bible, I mean, what, what do we value the most? If I say I value my salvation, but I never spend time with God, it's like me telling my wife I love her, but I never spend time with her. I never take her out. Hallelujah. I don't want to be out with her, but I'm always going out on my own. But I say I love you. I'll see you in the next couple couple days or couple months. How do you and the fact that we serve a what? A jealous God. 
But you sit with that for a second. They were so convincing. I'm assuming with zeal and passion, he said, oh, it was your faith that did it. It was his faith that did it. He realized the, the miracle that happened. He, what must I do? I need to get whatever y'all have. He took them to his home and wanted his entire family to get it. And as a result, he was baptized the same hour. According to the scripture, he received an experience that caused him to rejoice. One translation says that he leaped much for joy and exulted. Amen. All this happened when he believed in the Lord and the word of the Lord. The word believe in this passage in the Greek extracts a, a different meaning um, we need to see. It does not denote simple mental understanding or assent, but asserts absolute reliance, absolute adherence to everything that the Bible is telling me. Everything that the word says. So believe right there in the Greek, it's different. This is why you, you got to study because it, it had depth. It was obedience. It was adherence. Whatever the word says, that's what I'm about to do. It means accept the acceptance of God's word at face value. I just need to just believe and be obedient to everything that it's telling me to do, not arguing against certain pieces of it because I want to continue to do what I want to do. Amen. I normally don't read the amplified version of the Bible. Um, uh, but uh, if, if Mother Russell and Deacon Russell is online right now, I'm reading this one. I'm reading this one because watch this. Let me, um, first, wait, let me, let me read the King James Version first. Acts 16, 31, it says, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house, right? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Look at this amplified version. And they answered, believe in and on the Lord Jesus Christ, that it give your, that is, give yourself up to him. Take yourself out of your own keeping and entrust yourself into his keeping and you will be saved. And this applies to both you and to your household as well. <laughs> that was heavy to me. Take yourself out of your own keeping Give yourself up to him and entrust yourself into his keeping and you will, not maybe, you will be saved. Glory to God. In order to gain better understanding of this passage, we need to really examine the significance of that Peter attached to it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul taught that the kingdom of God includes joy in the Holy Ghost. Although it is not specifically stated in, in 16 that the jailer received the Holy Ghost, the reference to joy, it says that he leaped with joy and exulted, may indicate that he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let's, let, let's just do a little bit of comparison, amen, with the three scriptures, um, the three answers and the scripture sin in the Bible where they deal with the question, what must I do to be saved? Amen. We've discussed the biblical answer to that to that question. How can I be saved? Amen. In the light of the three most prominent passages that we went through. So hopefully you wrote them down because I'm going to ask you Sunday. What's the three? Where, where's the three? Uh, where's the destination? Where's the location of those three scriptures at? The Bible uses different language in each passage. Since the Bible is the infallible word of God, we know it does not contradict itself. Amen. And and and. and if you look at the Bible, everything that the Bible says once, it says again somewhere else. This is why it's good to have the Thompson chain. This is why it's good to have reference Bibles. Amen. Because God, we, we, we preach a gospel of also witnesses. Well, if God said it once, he said it again somewhere. You can find it. Therefore, despite the differences in the wording of the three passages we've talked through and analyzed, it cannot be contradictory or confusing. It is direct. It is clear. It is simple. We must believe that each answer, uh, it answers the question correctly. Each answer that we read out of the scripture, because we're just reading what the Bible tells us. In other words, it gives the same answer in different terms, from different viewpoints, and in different situations. But the same 
nonetheless. It's the same exact thing. Nicodemus was the first one. He was not answering a direct question about salvation. He was describing God's plan of salvation for the future New Testament church that's, that was about to come into existence. The situation on the, on the day of Pentecost, the second one, was different in that Peter gave a direct answer to a direct question about salvation. We're talking about an honest question. That's our topic. The spirit had been poured out. <laughs> so Peter did intend for his answer to give explicit instructions and to produce an immediate new birth experience. When he started preaching, he witnessed it and the Jews witnessed it happen. His listeners were Jews and Jewish proselytes. Most who've heard Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. They were all acquainted. All the Jews there were acquainted with religious concepts and the terminology. Peter was able to give them scholars a very precise, clear, simple answer to the question that was being asked in a crowd they were standing in with one single statement. Then thirdly, the scriptures we went through, Acts 16, Paul and Silas confronted a man who knew very little, a Gentile, knew nothing about terminology, amen, if anything about God. He just had just attempted suicide. Are you listening on tonight? He was recovering from the fright of an earthquake and was awestruck in the presence of the supernatural that he heard and somebody being concerned for him, telling him to stop, don't do it. They answer this question in a simple, general way that will be understanding and reassuring for you, for me today, for people that you're going to witness to today, tomorrow, for years to come. You just got to take them to the Bible. That What must I do to be saved? What must I do? It is not complex. The Bible says a child can understand it. You didn't see ch children in Apostolic Grace Temple get filled with the Holy Ghost, but you got a 40-year-old, 30-year-old, 50-year-old adult that still can't get a broken and contrite heart because you're still taking matters into your own hands and don't know how to fully surrender. That's why I read the Amplified Version. Turn your whole self over. Turn your mind over. Turn, turn everything over. And you will, you will be, not shot, you will be saved. But we don't know how to turn our whole self over. We're so busy trying to play like I got the Holy Ghost. I'm a talk like I got the Holy Ghost. It takes a, you, it, it's an authentic experience. And if I got the Holy Ghost, so if I'm around you, I can, I sense the people, saints that are tearing with, they can tell. When your Holy Ghost, your real Holy Ghost come on, they feel it. They jump. Ooh, glory. They feel it. When it's fire, when God, when they, on the day of Pentecost, fire was circling around their head. Fire. I know this helping somebody. What? What's the question, Corey? So, so the question is, so I want to make sure they hear, how do you respond to people that think they got the Holy Ghost, but they don't have it? You know they don't have it? I th you can't fool God. Amen. So I wouldn't, I, what, what, one of the things that I, I don't like to do with, with people is, um, take away the experience that they had so far. Amen. But if you have a relationship with the person, we need to walk through them like you have this experience right here. Because here's the thing. You can't fool God. And you have to be honest. And and you got to point them to the scripture. These people right here won't make it. They gonna, they're going to go to the lake of fire. So we have to go. We can't allow um, the enemy to get on a person and try to bamboozle the saints. Sometimes it can be discouraging, but
But all we got to do is take them. We got to take them to the word and show them what that word says. Because when you show them what the word says, the word is sharper than any two edged sword. We can try to. That's just like a person that's um, that's in another denomination that say they got the Holy Ghost. Oh, I got the Holy Ghost. When did you get the Holy Ghost? Explain to me what happened, because tell me, tell me about your experience. Oh, when I was baptized, I got it. So what happened? Was it this? Exp let, let, let me go look in the Bible. Let me take them directly to the scripture. So this, you see what happened? This was the first person. This was the first Gentile that was filled with the Holy Ghost over here in chapter 10. Let's read this out loud together. Was this your experience? Because that was, that was my experience. So I think you got to, everything has to, you got to put the word back on people. Does that make sense? You got to, you have to put, you can't allow, people can't, you can't outsmart God. <laughs> you can't outsmart God. And, um, uh, but, uh, but again, they, when they were talking to them, they answered them in a very clear way. They let them know the way of salvation was through Jesus Christ. Then they explained the gospel to him in detail to him and his household. Amen. Although these three passages, they, they, they stem from different situations, but the content of each is consistent with the others. They're consistent. So you can't, you, you, you can't negate them. <clears throat> Two passages speak of water baptism. And the third passage refers to the birth of, of water. I'm, I'm closing, y'all. Birth of water. Two passages speak of the work of the Spirit in salvation. And the third describes an experience that calls rejoicing, which happens when you are filled with the Holy Ghost. We conclude from the examples and scriptures, and scriptures, not man-made, not, not elders' opinion, not elderology. We are reading directly from the scriptures. And what does the scriptures say? We conclude from the examples and scriptures that salvation comes from repentance from sin and faith in Jesus. Well, I got faith in Jesus. Then why you, if you got faith in Jesus, then why every time a, a, a situation arises in your life, you got to drink? I got to have faith and I have got to have trust in him enough to know that he'll calm me down. From somebody that was an alcoholic that ran to drink. To it in order to numb myself. Uh, well, I got faith in Jesus. Well, then why are you robbing still? Why are you not? Why are you not depending totally on God? Because I had to learn in the middle of my walk and my, as a babe in Christ that my finances had to be pleasing in God's sight. I thought, you know, uh, like 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 Sister Kiyomi here. You know, she was when she first got saved, she was still out there hustling on the block. You know what I mean? She, and then they, I had to pull her coattail and tell her, you, well, you know, God don't want you out here hustling like that no more. What you mean? This is how I make my money. But God needs to be pleased with the way that you make your money. Amen. Amen. Repentance. So we conclude that 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 it comes. Salvation comes through repentance from sin and faith in Jesus Christ. Repentance and faith. Repentance and faith. Repentance is a change in mind, heart and direction. Repentance and faith will lead lead and guide you to baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, which is the birth of water, and to the baptism of spirit, which is the birth of the spirit. Amen. Now we can read, we can view salvation from two complementary points of view. Amen. One, it has a minimum requirement, namely a new birth. Two, it's a process of progressively Progressively moving forward, continuous, amen, appropriating God's grace throughout a continual life of faith and holiness. Holiness. He said, without holiness, you ain't going to even see me. <laughs> when he's coming back for a church unspotted and unbelieving, he's coming back for holiness. Holiness. To those of us, not now. You don't walk around and tell people that ain't saved that you holy. I'm holy. You know, then it's the holiness, the righteousness and the holiness of God. Amen. To those of us who already have the experience, the new birth, hopefully this gives more explanation of what happened to you and the significance of it. Right. To those of us who have not been baptized in the name of Jesus, have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You not. You 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 got 70 percent. You need the other 30. You need the Holy Ghost. 
You can't make it in without the Holy Ghost. Your ticket is on layaway right now. You, you, only, you only paid 70% of your item off. Amen. You need to do the rest. And it's a free gift. Amen. You, are, you, 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 you already got credits in the bank. It was already paid for. You just have to prepare your mind, your heart to receive it. You got to receive it. Amen. Just read with an open mind. Open your Bibles out of the scriptures I just did. Did Read the book of Acts. Read the Bible with an open mind, with an open heart, with an open Bible, and tell God this. God, anything that I'm missing, give it to me. Whatever traditions that I've had in my mind, whatever thing is holding me back, whatever image I'm trying to uphold, Whoever I'm trying to please while I'm in the church, I'm trying to be something that I'm not. I just need to be pleasing to you. Give me whatever I'm missing and help me with this thing, God. I'm not minimizing, again, like I was telling Brother Corey, what God has already done for you in your life or deny what you have felt. However, I do want you to see the importance of Scripture, baptize in Jesus' name. So if you was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you don't got it. You need his name on you, not the titles that his name represents. You need Jesus' name on you, and you need to be filled with the Spirit. Amen? It's biblical for us today, and God wants everybody to receive it. It's not something strange. It's not something that's difficult. It's, it's not complex. So as you draw closer in your word, and indeed, so will God, and he'll give you all the prerequisites because they're free for you to have in order for you to make it into heaven. Amen? Amen. I am going to leave you with that. I know that was a mouthful, so go back in part one and part two. It is literally, what must I do to be saved? It is the questions that is, is describing the humanity of man, the fall there, the recognition of where you are at before Christ even came to you. It is describing what salvation is, and then it is describing how I get it. That's the simplicity of the gospel. I can preach that message every Sunday for the rest of my life, and God will say, well done. We get too creative with you. You, you try to get God don't need your creativity. He just needs you to preach the gospel. Preach Jesus. And everything else will be all right. Just preach Jesus. Amen. Well, I'm going to get out your hair. Amen. Um, Lord, say the same. Amen. We do have prayer line tomorrow. Amen. At 730. Amen. So make sure you join uh, on and um, um, get prayer. Amen. On do we have to, this week is second Sunday. Nope. So no Christian word education. But Lord, say the same. We will see you all at 10 a.m. Um, do we got any Saturday women? Women things? I don't think we got anything. But if we do, I know Minister G just landed back in Arizona. So welcome back, Minister G. Make sure you plug it in there if, if, if we're missing anything or if there's something happening on Saturday. Other th Saturday. Other than that, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And we'll see you soon.